Hey, Kale. Thank you so much for being here today. We're so grateful that we get to interview you. I would love if you could introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Kale Sadoff. I am 19 years old, and for the past four or so years, I've been writing and illustrating children's books for those who I feel uh, could be more so included in society. Amazing. I would love if you could tell us more about what your books are about. Okay. Um, I generally really like to write for those who have special needs. And I would love it if my books could get more incorporated into schools and things like that. Um, My first book is about uh, a duck named Danny, and he gets really distracted easily. And as he's trying to fly south with his flock, he gets distracted, he hits a tree, and he falls to the ground and can't fly anymore. So he has to find a new way to fly south uh, because he can't go the normal way like everybody else. And at the end of the book, he actually finds a new way that's even faster than everybody else can go. So he makes his own unique solution to his problem. In my second book, it's titled Danny and Kevin Conquer Camping. It's our same Danny the Duck and his friend Kevin. Uh, This book is what we call a mission book. It seeks to bring attention to a certain group of people who are sometimes overlooked. Uh, For this book, it was targeting the group of limb loss and limb difference. So Kevin actually unfortunately loses his leg in a farming accident. And that sends him into a really dark place emotionally. And Danny spends the whole book trying to come up with new ways to sort of get Kevin out of his funk and uh, get him to realize that although he lost something near and dear to him, he still has so much amazing things in his life, including his best friend that's not going anywhere. And yeah, he has so much in his life that although he lost one really important part of his life, he has still has so much to live for. And my newest book, Stuart H. Quills and His Explosive Emotions. Um, Stuart is a porcupine, a very smart porcupine. And he is so smart, in fact, that his teacher decides he's not learning enough in his original school because, well, he know he knows everything that he's being taught. So she sends him to a more challenging school called the Big City Academy. And it's at this school that he finds that he is in all ways different than his other new classmates. And this makes Stuart extremely nervous. And when Stuart gets nervous, something really special happens. And this special thing makes it really hard for him to make friends. So this whole book is about Stuart trying to overcome his big emotions and realize that although new things can sometimes be scary, they don't have to be. We can be excited about these new things and not let our nerves get in the way of letting amazing things happen to us. Amazing. What inspired you to write your books? Um. Well, I've always felt called to write for those who are less than included in society. I myself was born with a stutter for most of my life. So, um, well, in my early years, it was especially evident when I was reading. So that was something that I was really insecure about. I did not like doing in front of the class and things like that. Um, It wasn't until I was about 15 that uh, I really felt inspired to start writing, and it was when I was at my first home track meet that I was inspired to um, really write for those with disabilities. Um, It was during the two-mile race, which is eight laps. It's a really long race, and right when it starts, right when the gun goes off, Um, I'm standing with my teammates and this kid runs past us. Uh, it's, it was no secret that he looked a lot different than the rest of the people running out there. And 
everyone around me just erupts in laughter and screaming hateful comments and just just screaming at this kid for wanting to live a life like everybody else around him. And I was just shocked at how quickly this situation escalated. And I turned to someone who I'd known for years and I just simply asked him, what, how would you feel if somebody were saying these things to you? And without even blinking, this guy turns to me, he says, if I were that kid, I would kill myself. And then he turned right back around, kept on shouting. And I just really saw no hope for this kid. And as he comes back around, he has something I'll never forget. He looks into this crowd and he smiles, the biggest smile I've ever seen. And everybody just stopped. Everybody was so shocked. They they started back up again. They kept screaming. And every time that he kept coming back around, his smile got bigger. And everybody in that crowd realized that they could do nothing to take the joy out of his eyes. So I I never got to meet this kid. I never got to I never got to know his name, but um it's my mission to bring people as much courage as he has. And yeah, just um be a light to those who are living in a dark world. Love that. When you were writing your books, who were you thinking of when it comes to who your books are for? Um, in my career, I have gotten to meet a lot of those out there with special needs. Um, gotten to go make speeches and just really meet the people that my books are affecting. And it's just, it's, it's crazy to see how much outreach I actually have. Um, I went and spoke at this one place called the Action Club. And it's a club where um, adults and kids, like anybody who has special needs, can come and um, just sort of be a community around each other. And I was making a speech there this one time, and uh, this older woman looks at me and she says, "People are afraid of us." And she was she was really upset, and she said, "With with your books, you could." You could make it so kids can see us in a different way. So kids, when they see us in other places, they're not afraid because they've seen they've seen these things before. So when I write, I think of those people. I think of yeah, just breaking down the barriers and like if kids see something in a book or in on a TV show or anything like that, they're more likely to respond in a nicer way and not be startled or afraid or anything like that. Amazing. How long have you been writing and what made you really sit down and start? Um, when I was 15, uh, I began writing. I've been drawing ever since my whole life. I've always been known as the art kid at school, but Writing is not something I never really tried up until this time. Um, yeah, when it was at night, I think, when this word came into my head and I was I was really startled about it. I really did not want to think about this word, and that word was author. And um, me being someone who had a stutter and didn't like books, that's not a particular word that I attributed to myself. So I kind of just set this word aside, didn't think about it. The next day, my grandma was at her house and she takes me aside and she, she shows me this thing on Facebook and is telling me about this children's author. And bells sort of go off my head and I remember what I was thinking about before. But I'm like, coincidence, I just pushed it to the side. Uh, later that day, I'm doing dishes, and my sister, who was studying to be a teacher at the time, was talking with my mom. My mom says, you know so much about kids, you should be a children's author. Then bells went off again. I I just said, coincidence, nothing, not, not believing it. And then later that 
that night, uh, my family was watching this TV show called Holy Moly. And every time the new contestant goes on the show, they say their name and then they say um, what they do for a living. And I'm, I'm a little paranoid at this point, thinking about all these coincidences. And then something in me just tells me to look up. I look up and there's this this older lady just staring dead down the barrel of the TV just and says, I'm a children's book author. And at that point, I just sort of broke down. I got out my phone and downloaded Google Docs and I just started writing and yeah, the rest is sort of history. Love that. That's so amazing. What do you need in your writing space to help you stay focused? Um, well, throughout my day, things will just sort of come to me, just little ideas that I can just like take a little note on. And then um, you have all just be able to put it away, go about my day. And then later on, I can come back to those ideas and really expand on them. Um, I'm not really a person that will sit down for hours and um, just just sort of like stare at a piece of paper. Um, yet the words just sort of come to me at their own time. And yep, it's actually a lot quicker of a process than I ever thought it would be. Love that. What is your favorite writing snack and drink? Um, I really like pretzels. I'm a pretzel guy. Um, and I don't really drink pop or anything, so just water. Awesome. What type of books do you personally enjoy reading? Um, well, my favorite book of all is definitely the Bible. I love the principles in that and, um, yeah, just everything that Jesus said is just really resonates and shows me how I'm supposed to live my life, treat others. I love that. Um, in my late, latest years, um, I've actually gotten into reading more children's books, honestly, and getting, um, yeah, if you are a writer of children's books, you'll find a lot of joy in reading other people's work and like looking at illustrations. That's something that I've really gotten into in the past few years. Love that. Are there any books or authors that inspired you to become a writer? Um, well, the one of my favorite authors that I've seen in the latest years is Ryan T. Higgins. I like his um, ideals. I like his illustrations. And yeah, that's someone who I really derive a lot of inspiration from. Amazing. What books did you grow up reading? Did you have an all-time favorite? Um, I really liked the Skippy John Jones series because it had a lot of imagination and yeah, he could go on all these adventures and, and just his closet. And that was, that was really cool. Love that. On the other side of that, now as an adult, what are your favorite series or authors that if they come out with something, you automatically grab it? Um, like I said, anything with Ryan T. Higgins, anything that he publishes, I'll, I'll pick that up because um, I'm studying to be a teacher right now. So um, any cool books that I can get that I'll put in my own little library in my classroom, I'll, I'll definitely get those. So, yep, really like anything with Ryan T. Higgins. Amazing. What would you tell someone just starting out with reading again? Well, I think... Just find things that talk about things that you love. Um, I love reading about sports, other things like that. Um, yeah, just anything that resonates with you. That's why I like reading the Bible so much and other things. Um, yeah, anything that derives from your interests and your passions. Amazing. On the other side of that, what would you tell someone just starting to write their own book? Um, I definitely say be patient. I've had, I can't tell you how many um, 
sort of failed ideas that I've had, things that I thought were great at the time, but didn't really amount to anything. Some books that I didn't think were going to make it at the beginning actually turned out to be some of my greatest successes. So really be patient. If you have to take a step back from your work for a little while, just let it sit there. And then if an idea comes to you, that's great. Um, but yeah, don't give up, don't give up on anything too soon. And yeah, just be patient and wait for the ideas to come to you. So amazing. What's one thing that people are generally surprised to find out about you? Um, I'd say that I, uh, my age is probably the biggest thing, especially back when I first started out. That was the main headline um, of newspapers and everything else that I was in was um, local high schooler writes books and illustrates and everything like that. So, yeah. People are always really surprised to hear about my age. Amazing. Is there anything you would like to say or add? Well, I'd just like to say all the glory to God, uh, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave me all these gifts, showed me my true path in life. And I pray that I can use these gifts to better serve my community and gain a bigger outreach by the day, find new ways to include others, break down these barriers that have been set up in our society and include those that aren't typically included in schools. Amazing. Where's the best place for readers to find your books? I know some readers love signed copies. Is that an option and the best place to connect with you? I have a website called kalesadoff 20 dot wixsites dot com slash portfolio it's a really long website but that's my website i'm also on amazon or my publisher imagine we publishers also has a website amazing we'll be sure to drop those links in the show notes that way everyone can find you and again thank you so much for being on today we're so grateful that we got to interview you thank you for having me it's been awesome